Hello, my name is Ryan Manuk. I'm a solutions consultant here at Claris. I'll be your guide for today's Create an App webinar. And we have a lot of exciting things to talk about, but first, let's cover a few brief housekeeping notes. So for the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. If you run into any problems at any time, please contact 888-259-8414. Throughout today's webinar, you can ask me a question or make a comment at any time. And to do so, go to the GoToWebinar control panel, click on that question section, enter your question, and click on send. So today's webinar, we're going to focus on Claris's FileMaker platform, which allows us to easily create agile custom apps, share them to cloud for accessibility wherever you are, and integrate them with other systems and services for premier digital experiences. But the focus of our webinar today is the app creation aspect of the FileMaker platform. We're going to concentrate on the desktop FileMaker Pro Advanced, as well as the mobile FileMaker Go and WebDirect technologies. Now, I do want to point out, this is just part one of a webinar series exploring the entire FileMaker platform. So it'll be beneficial to sign up when you can for future sessions exploring those share and integration areas. Now for the next half hour, it's gonna be my job to walk you through the basics of building your first custom app. So working with fields for the first time, designing a layout, your first script. If you feel you're further along in your journey than an introduction to creating your first app and you're looking for more advanced material, check out alternative webinars we have for free in our Learning Center section of our website, or even better, sync up with one of our global partners who provide training and can offer a more focused deep dive into the product. We have a fantastic partner community for you to lean on. All right, now back to our app for today. Let's imagine we're going to create a quick contact management app for a customer that we recently talked to, Coastal Corners Landscaping. So they're a small 15 person shop and they provide a service like many of you listening today. So why did they call us? Well, they're in a work rut. When they started out, they were much smaller, and they felt like they were in a digital transformation by moving away from paper and managing their business on spreadsheets, taking digital notes out in the field, and using email as the main form of communication across the company. And honestly, that did work for a while. But as demand grew for their business, and as their company started expanding, they really started to feel the limitations of those task-driven appliance apps that just couldn't grow with them. It became harder and harder to track data that was now scattered across multiple employees' notes and spreadsheets. They were wasting so many hours a week searching for and re-entering data. And this may sound familiar if you have a field team, but during their meetings, their sales team had to call back into the office to verify the most recent updates to information. So we took a few minutes. We listened to their pain points, we listened to their workflow needs, and we agreed upon a concept of a custom app that we believe will work for them. So if it all works out, we'll have a custom app that will better capture and represent how their business is conducted for today, and we'll present it in a manner that incorporates team feedback for the best way to manage their business. We wanna solve those scattered data issues and make sure data is centralized for easy, real-time access. And we want their mobile teams to be able to perform their best work untethered to their cubicle in the office. So without further ado, let's get started creating our app and start designing some layouts, working with some fields, scripts, and other objects. As noted, Coastal Corners Landscaping, they track a lot of their business through spreadsheets. And here are two examples. To start, they have a customer spreadsheet all the standard contact information like you would expect. And then they have a second work order spreadsheet, and this just tracks all of the jobs that they agreed to perform for their customers, which are noted by this customer number column here. So let's get started building their app. Now there's a lot of different ways to get started. Certainly you could build from scratch, you can use an existing template, you can leverage one of our 50,000 global partners. Uh, they're a fantastic resource. If you're starting with a spreadsheet, it's actually as simple as a drag and drop. So I'm gonna take that customer spreadsheet and drag and drop it right into my FileMaker Pro Advanced. Now let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this Coastal Corners Contacts. I'll go ahead and save that. 
Now I did want to point out that I am designing and building on a Mac, but these are the same exact steps that you would follow if you were building on a Windows machine. All right, so we now have our first look at the start of our FileMaker custom app. Now we're immediately taken into what we call table view, and this is just a spreadsheet-like view. You can do a lot of the things that you would do in a spreadsheet. There's another view I wanted to show you. This is called form view, and this is where you can view records one at a time. Now, this is not the end result of what we want our custom app to look like. We want to create our own views. So where do we get started doing that? Well, over here on the right-hand side, I'm gonna click this Edit Layout button, and this takes us to Layout Mode. So this is where we can design that look and feel and interface of your FileMaker custom app. And you can actually create as many views that you want. So I'm gonna go over here on the left-hand side, click this New Layout button. We'll give our layout a name. We'll call this Customer Details. We have some templates to choose from. In our scenario, since we're gonna be working with our sales team, uh, they have iPads, we'll choose an iPad template, and we'll choose to build this out in landscape a view. So I'll go ahead and click on that finish button, and we now have a blank slate for us to begin designing our custom app. So let's start with some literal text. I'll give this layout a title. So I'll just type customer, I'll type uh, customers here. We also have a logo that I love to have on this layout as well for some branding. So let me jump to that logo folder. There it is. So I'm gonna take that image and I'm going to drag and drop it right onto that layout. Now, you're gonna hear me say that term a lot, drag and drop, as we work through the interface and designing aspects of the FileMaker custom map. Just keep in mind, you can make your custom map as simple or as complex as you wanted. If you want to just create a singular task-oriented app, you can do that. If you wanted to develop in more pro code fashion, jumping into JavaScript, uh, leveraging data APIs to connect to different systems and services, you can do that as well. If you're only limited by your imagination in terms of how you want to pro solve your problem. Now, the next thing we want to do for this custom app is get some information onto our layout. And in FileMaker, information is stored in what we call fields. Over here on the left-hand side, you'll see that I actually have some fields in my field list. Where did they come from? Well, these were from the spreadsheet. FileMaker automatically took those columns and turned them into fields for us. Certainly, we could have created a customer field, manager field, and an email field from scratch, but again, FileMaker just automatically turned them into fields for us during that conversion process. Now, next thing I wanna do is we have some areas that Coastal Corners Landscaping will be landscaping for each uh, company. So we love to get some photos into this custom app as well. If we look at our fields list, we don't have a field for images, but that's okay. If I click on this new field button here down at the bottom left, let's go ahead and give this field a name. We'll just call this photo. And I'm gonna change that field type from text to container. Now a container field type, this stores media files. So if you wanna track documents, images, even sound files and movie files, you can put that right into a container field type. Now the next thing I'd like to do is, I wanna track if this customer is active or inactive. Maybe later on we could build a report for inactive customers and make that part of a follow-up campaign. I don't have a field to track the status yet, but we already know how to make fields. So let's jump back over to that new field button over here at the bottom left. We'll call this field status, and we'll make sure that is a, a text field type. So again, we'll drag and drop that over our, to our layout, just like that, super simple. Now, there's different ways I could input data into the status field. Certainly, I could type in active or inactive, but that feels like an area that I can try to automate or just make it a little bit easier for data entry. So let's highlight that field. And let me jump over on the right-hand side to my inspector and jump over to the data tab. Now the, the default control style for a field, a text field is edit box. That means that when you interact with it, you click in that field and you can start typing. But if I select this menu, you can see there's different ways that I can input data. I can turn this into a drop-down list or a pop-up menu, or when it's appropriate, I can turn it into a drop-down calendar. 
For this scenario, let's just choose pop-up menu. Now I need to associate some values to that menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new value list. I'm going to click on that new button over here at the left. We'll give this a name, really simple, we'll just call this status. If I wanted to, I could choose values from other fields, but in this scenario, it's really straightforward. We'll just create our own custom values, active and inactive. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right. Now, pretty good start to our custom app. Let's go ahead, exit layout mode, and start interacting with what we've built. So I'm going to click on the exit layout button at the upper right. I'm now in browse mode. Again, this is where I can interact with the custom app. You can see that if I want to, I can click on that status field and I start making some changes here. If I walk over to my folder where we typically store images, I can grab that Bryant Research image and drag and drop that right over onto the container field. All right, we're already starting to solve some of that scattered information issues. And this is not just kind of like a read-only work with just the records that you have custom app uh, that we're starting with. If I wanted to, I could just start creating new records. So I'll click on this new record button. I'll add a new customer. I'll go ahead and promote myself to a manager. And we'll say that uh, this is brand new active customer as well. So a really great start. Um, let's start thinking about this area over here on the right hand side that we can start working with. Again, we have that spreadsheet of work orders. We'd love to get that historical information tied to the appropriate customer. And we'd also like to have the most recent contracts available to the sales team as well so they can have the most effective conversations when they're out in the field. So we're going to uh, start designing again. That means we need to jump back into layout mode. So in the upper right corner, we'll jump to the edit layout button. Again, we're now in layout mode. And I'm going to leverage this tool called a tab control. And a tab control, it's just a, uh, an object that allows you to take the best advantage of the real estate that you have on your layout. It's a great way to organize. So let's start creating some tabs. The first tab will be for contract. And the next tab will be for work orders. We'll go ahead and create that. Make a full justification. And I do want to save myself some space over here for later on. Now the way it works is that I can place objects or fields on a particular tab and then I click or tap on that tab to interact with those objects or fields. Really straightforward. So let's start building out the contract tab. We don't have a field to store a contract, but again, we know how to create fields now. So let's jump back over on the bottom left to the new field button. We'll create a new field, we'll call it contract, and we're going to change that type from text to container. Again, this is going to store media, so we want that to be a container field type. And I'll just drag and drop it right onto my layout. Again, this is exactly what you do when you build and design your layout, just creating objects, creating fields, placing them wherever uh, appropriate on the layout. I'm going to bring over this other field called contracted work, and uh, this field essentially just stores the jobs that we've agreed to perform for the customer. I'm going to add another field called uh, signature. Okay, so we'll create another field. So I'll show you later on that you can actually store a signature right into a container field. So let's just do some quick alignment here. Again, these are just how you would approach your solution in terms of how you would move objects around. Again, really that simple and easy. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll save the work orders tab from now. Let's jump back into browse mode. Okay, you can see that we have that contracted work here. Let's walk over to the contracts folder that we have for Bryant contract. And again, Coastal Corners Landscaping, they used to spend hours trying to find the most up-to-date information and searching through bins of files but now we have all that information right in one easily accessible location. Now another important area of feedback that we heard is that the sales team would love to be able to send out communications via this custom app. So they love to send out emails to their contact about an upcoming meeting or send a follow-up directly from the custom app after a meeting. So 
How would we start building that out? Well, there's different ways that we can send an email out through FileMaker. We could draw a button and have an email sent out, or we could have our FileMaker Cloud schedule an email to send out as well. In this scenario, we're gonna go ahead and draw a button on the layout that the user can click or tap on that will bring up an email that can be sent out to the contact. So that's gonna take two things. One, we're gonna to need to draw a button object, and two, we're gonna to need to create a script to automate that email process. So how do we do that? Well, let's jump back into layout mode. So back to this edit layout button. All right, so we're gonna draw a button onto our layout. Let's give it some space here. We'll select the button from our toolbar at the top and we'll draw that object onto our layout. We can add some text here, or we can use an icon, or even both. So I'll choose an appropriate icon. What's great is that if you can't find an icon that accurately presents what you're trying to convey, you can actually upload your own icon as well. But right now, this button, it really isn't gonna do anything. You could click on it or tap on it in that browse mode, and it's not gonna do anything, so we have to attach an action to it. So in FileMaker, automation happens through scripts or calculations. So let's highlight this button. I'll right click that and for an action we'll say that we want to create a script. Okay, we'll create a brand new script called send email. Now over here on the right hand side are all of the script steps that you can use to perform your automated task. Now if you're not familiar with the concept of scripts that's okay. Scripts, they're just steps that fire off in a sequence that produce a result. So if you wanted to run a weekly report, for example, certainly you could manually go to a layout. You could perform a find for the appropriate records. You can uh, print that record and save it as a PDF. Or you could create a script that would automatically perform those steps for you to save you some clicks. You can make scripts as simple or as complex as you want. For our script, we're going to be trending towards the simpler side. In fact, we only need one script step for our button. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the send mail script step and bring up the send mail options window. Now certainly I could type in the contact's email address, but I could also tell FileMaker, hey, go ahead and grab the value in that email field and place it into that to section. For the subject, again, I could grab values from uh, fields, I could put in some literal text, I could combine them both, but in this scenario, we'll just add some literal text. We'll just say coastal corner uh, landscaping follow up. And the same thing for the message, I could incorporate literal text and fields, maybe some invoice uh, field values, for example. Uh, but in this scenario, we'll just stick with some literal text and we'll write. Thank you for your business. Conceptually, you get how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that OK button. Click OK, click OK as well. And now we have an action ready for our button. So let's exit this layout mode. And if I click on that button, you can see that I now have an email automatically appear. In the two section, we have Doris's email address pulled from her record. In the subject line, we have that literal text, coastal corner landscaping follow-up. And in the message body, we have that literal text, thank you for your business, again, just like we expected. So we just created an interface and workflow that really makes sense for their business task. But now we really want to start bringing in all of that heavy historical data that's scattered across a bunch of spreadsheets. So we'll walk through importing data into our custom map. We'll build relationships between tables of information, and then we'll find a way to display the appropriate related data. All right, if you remember, we have that work order spreadsheet. We'd love to get all that historical information tied to the appropriate contact. Now, how do we get it into our FileMaker custom map? Well, we're gonna import it. So let me walk over to the file menu. We'll jump down to import records, file, and we'll walk to that work order spreadsheet. Select that, we'll open that. 
Now, I don't want to import work order information into the customers table, so I'll tell FileMaker to go ahead and create a brand new table for work orders. We'll go ahead and import that, and just like that, we have over 1,400 work order records. I have a brand new work order table of information. Now remember, I want to take all of the work order records and match them to the appropriate contact. Well, when I want to take information from one table and display it on a layout that's pulling from a different table, I need to create a relationship between those two tables. So what we're going to do is a really quick peek under the hood. So I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database. Now here on the Tables tab, you'll see that we have two tables of information, but you can actually create as many tables of information as you want. You can have as many workflows uh, as you want in one file, make a custom map. You can then create as many fields associated with those tables of information. And then the real power of FileMaker, you can easily create relationships between those tables through this nice graphical user interface. So in this scenario where we're trying to connect customers to their work orders, we're just going to leverage that customer number field. So I'm going to take the customer number field from contacts table and drag and drop it over to the customer number field in the work orders table. And just like that, we have a relationship. Super easy. Essentially, what we're telling FileMaker from a high level looking down, hey, any record in the work orders table that has a value of one in the customer number field, share it with the first customer. Any record in the work orders table that has a value of two in the customer's number field, share that with the second customer, and so on and so forth. All right, so we'll go ahead and click OK. We have a brand new relationship between those two tables. How do we display the related information? Well, let's jump back into layout mode. And we'll go over to that work orders tab. And I have this tool here called a portal. Now this portal, it's a view into related tables records. So I'm gonna tell FileMaker, choose that work orders table, and then we'll choose some fields from that related table as well. We'll choose date, description, and hours. Go ahead and click OK. Now let's exit layout mode, jump back into browse mode so we can see that change. If I click on that tab, look at that. Just three clicks and we have all of that historical information for Bryant Research Park. And it's not just this record. As we scroll through, you can see that portal dynamically change with the appropriate work order history. Just a simple way to start solving for that scattered information. Now let's jump back into layout mode. There's one other thing I want to do with portals just for an easier way to navigate through my custom app. I'm going to highlight all of these objects really quickly. Let's highlight these and I'm going to move them over to the right hand side of my custom app. We can leverage a portal to create a master detail navigation in our custom app and I'll show you how we do that. Let's walk over to that portal tool again and we'll draw it onto our layout. All right, there we go. And this time, instead of choosing a related table, I'm gonna tell FileMaker, go ahead and create a relationship with the current table, which is the contact table. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to wanna to choose the, let's say the customer, and let's take that status field as well. So I'll go ahead and click OK there. Okay, we'll do a little bit of design here. Let's say that we only want to show eight rows. We'll make this a little bit larger here. And for the status, let's just make this text a little bit smaller. And we'll see where I'm going with this. We'll say this is a 10 font. Bring this out. Okay, now let's jump back into browse mode. And we can see all of our records that we have. Just a little bit easier for navigation. If you want to, we can click on a record. Uh, for any of the statuses that we have, for the customers, like you can see with Bryant Research Park, we have active. If we change um, Pine Executive Station and Optimal industry, uh, Industrial Station to inactive, you'll see that they automatically populate there as well. So we can just get a quick glimpse of 
who we're working with. If we want to, we can do a quick search for those records as well. Like we mentioned, maybe we'll have a follow-up campaign for all inactive customers. But again, the point is, it was just a really quick, easy way to uh, build like that master detail type of workflow for a nice, easier uh, navigation in our uh, custom app. Well, I think we're in a really good spot for our custom app design. We've already started solving some efficiency issues, so we can now put better focus on more productive tasks. So I think it's time for us to share our app. Let's get this in the hands of the field team. So hosting your custom app is really, really easy to do. And it all starts with this share icon at the top of your FileMaker Pro Advanced. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and select upload to host. Let me set a password for this file. Accessing your host is all done through IP address or domain name. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my credentials here and I will now upload my FileMaker custom app. We'll give that a second. I'll click on that done button. I'll now re-log into my FileMaker custom app and you can see that in parentheses, it just shows us that we're now accessing a, uh, a hosted file, right? So it looks like that file that we were just working with, but now we're accessing a hosted file. Now, how do we get this over onto an iPad? It's a really great question and in order to show you how to do that, I'm going to bring up my QuickTime app. Now, I have my iPad Air hardwired to my laptop. It's just allowing me to mirror my screen onto my laptop. Now, in the upper left corner, you can see that we have FileMaker Go. That's a app that's free to download off of the App Store. If I tap on that, you'll see that there are three icons down at the bottom. Okay, so recent just shows the file that I've recently accessed. I want to point out that middle icon, device. I can actually store local copies of my custom app right on my iOS device. So if I'm in an area with a intermittent network connection or no network connection at all, I can just fire up a local copy, I can add some records, then when I have a network connection, I can push those changes to my hosted uh, custom, um, then I can push those changes to my hosted custom app. So we're never far away from doing our work effectively. If I tap on hosts icon, again, this is where I can access different hosts based off of their IP address or domain name. I'm now connected to my host and you can see that Coastal Corners contacts that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. We'll have to enter our credentials. Oops. We'll enter our credentials here. And there is our file. And you can see the fidelity between the two is really, really high. Uh, we didn't have to bring in an Xcode developer onto this project to redesign this for us. FileMaker does all of that heavy lifting on the back end. We just make it really easy accessible to um, use these powerful technologies. And if I wanted to, you can see that um, I can do the same exact things I can do on the desktop in terms of interacting with my custom app. If I wanted to change the status, I can do that. Uh, we built that in. If I wanted to view the PDF, uh, we can have Doris view that PDF, look at the terms of the contract. She likes the terms of that contract. Remember that signature field that we built? I can tap on that now. And I can select signature and have Doris sign that off. Tap accept. All right. And the whole time I'm making these changes, Take a look at the desktop side. You can see that it's adopted the uh, inactive change that we made. We have Doris's signature there. Anyone who's accessing this file, uh, Mac, Windows, iOS devices, web browsers, they're gonna see these changes in real time. So that's a quick glimpse of the iOS workflow. Again, the fidelity between that and desktop is really, really high, and so is the web browser access as well. So, let me show you quickly how we do that. Now, in my uh, FileMaker host, I already have web publishing and the WebDirect technology enabled. I just need to do two really quick things in my FileMaker custom app. So let's hide my FileMaker Go for now. And in my FileMaker custom app, I'm gonna go back to the file menu, manage security area, and this is where you can create as many accounts as you want or who can log into your file and then privilege sets or 
what can someone do once they've logged into your file. You can also determine what technologies you want people to access your file with as well. So in this scenario, I'm going to tell FileMaker that anyone who has a full access account, I want them to be able to access my file via WebDirect. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and OK on there. We'll now open up a web browser. I will go to my FileMaker WebDirect homepage. And you can see that we have that Coastal Corners contact file that uh, we had created. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And we'll enter our file credentials. Sign in. And there is our file in a web browser. Again, just like I promised, you wouldn't have to recode anything in HTML. FileMaker does all of that heavy lifting on the back end. And just like how FileMaker Go had really close fidelity between the desktop, you can see the fidelity between the web browser and the desktop is really high as well. And again, we can use this custom app in a web browser just like you would expect as we use the master detail to scroll through of the appropriate records. If you want to make a change, I'll go ahead and remove that, make that. Now before I commit that record, keep your eye on the desktop side. All right, you can see that uh, again, the desktop adopts that and all technologies that are accessing this hosted file will adopt that change as well. So we didn't have to bring in an Xcode or web designer on the project. We didn't have to wait to generate additional code. FileMaker simply made these powerful technologies easily accessible for us. Our team out in the field now has access to real-time information for better conversations and more effective work. What did our 30-minute custom app achieve? Well, where Coastal Corners was stuck force-fitting their business to the design and workflows of their appliance apps, we now have in place a custom solution that can easily change with their business at any time. Where their data was previously siloed across multiple apps, we've now centralized everything to streamline searching and data entry. And where their teams in the field were still tethered to their cubicles in the office, we've provided real-time access in the real place that they work. So it's a great, impactful start for just one area of their business from here, they can continue growing their app to reach other areas in the company. They can integrate with other software and services for premier digital experiences. And ultimately, they can truly realize their digital transformation. Now, as noted, Coastal Corners Landscaping, that isn't a real company, but it is a great composite of the hundreds of stories that we hear on a weekly basis. And I know you're thinking, Ryan, I'm not a landscaping company. But all of these techniques and all of these methodologies that we learned today, they apply to every single FileMaker custom app that's out there. So if you're wondering, can FileMaker be your job tracking app, your inspection form, your CRM, your interface for robotics, your reporting tool for IoT-driven data, the answer is absolutely. The FileMaker platform, it isn't anything out of the box. You're only limited by your imagination for solving your problems. Now, when this session ends, download the FileMaker platform. We have a trial if you haven't downloaded it already. If you want to tackle some tasks yourselves, check out our Learning Center section on the website. We have fantastic resources like online tutorials for building an app, uh, previously recorded webinars to view for free, and more. And if it makes more sense to lean on an expert to help you design and build your custom app, we have a global community of 50,000 partners who are all invested in your success. Finally, please make sure to sign up for the free FileMaker community forums. Again, it's a completely free resource. You can post as many conversation topics as you want, gain guidance from other developers, and receive important company updates.